Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today I'm going to show you how to make a shocking amount of money using your scav on Streets of Tarkov without using keys or anything like that. With patch 13, PMC survival rates are at an all-time low due to a combination of full raids from the server changes at the end of last wipe, plus scavs being more deadly than ever. No! No! Oh god! No! So if you need to make some money and make it quick, my suggestion is head to Streets of Tarkov, and especially at night time. This works so well because in typical new map style, Streets is absolutely stacked full of loot and is very dense in certain locations. Very few players currently have the access to or desire to use NVGs, minimising the threat of PMCs in general, but at night time the map is actually lit quite adequately for scav runs because of the various street lights and overhead lamps present in most of the areas. Many of you are understandably struggling with performance issues on the map a bit, which is really unfortunate, and while night time does appear to be a bit more stable than the daytime, it isn't immune to rubber banding of course, but this is relatively similar for everyone. The plus side of scaving like this of course is that we're not really intending to fight anybody so you can slideshow your way around the map looting stuff to the extract. When playing PMC, streets is incredibly hard to traverse across because there are so many scavs in the decent loot spots, and some areas require you just to cross your fingers and sprint over the main road for example. Taking fire and fighting back draws in even more action from other players, be it PMC or scav, and overall this makes the map a fun experience generally, but it does make it significantly harder especially when on your own. The flip side of this is as a scav you can basically do whatever you want. At night most other players are looting too or PMCs doing tricky quests in the hot areas and so far in all the raids but one I've been able to wander about and loot whatever I like without any hassle at all. There's so much loot in fact that many areas go entirely unlooted because there is enough and more for everybody to go around. Once you're finished there are 4 easy extracts depending on where you are and it seems that you get the same 4 every time. Maybe not if you have low scav karma, but so far I tend to use sewer the most. Basement descent and entrance to catacombs are sometimes useful and very very rarely do I use ventilation shaft. So the key area that I have been looting is the area between Lexos and the Sparger's shop, but most importantly the scav makeshift camp in the middle. If I spawn on the left hand side of the map, I'll head here right away and maybe search a few easy bags as I go. Typically, a quick run through Sparja and a more in-depth search through the scav camp from top to bottom fills me completely, and then you can easily exit out of sewer. This area is also great because if you don't spawn with a bag on, often there are partially looted scavs here from earlier action that you can grab one from. For complete disclosure, these raids were recorded one after another until I was done with the footage, except for one where I got killed by a player scav part way through, so I haven't simply cherry picked out the good raids, in fact the results were partly what made me want to make this video in the first place. So in this first raid that we actually did on stream, we hit primarily the scav camp between Lexos and Sparja, grabbing tons of industrial loot. Random suitcases and bags on streets seem to have amazing spawns, I found my first ever duffel graphics card the other day and here we find an intel. Now, making our way to construction, I decide just to ignore Sparger for the moment. There is a cache down in the dip here, but there was a suspicious scav, so I waited at the top until they went away and didn't end up looting it. There are a bunch of toolboxes, weapons crates, and a static dead scav up here though for regular raids. For some reason, there are various wooden crates across the map that give the loot this audio prompt at the bottom, but don't actually let you loot them. It's a bit strange, but maybe this will be fixed in the future. At this point I really do need a bag, but before heading into the main section we hit the back of Sparja which has more industrial loot along the corridor, some loose loot and a black crate in the back of the van. After a quick trip through the main shop without much luck, we head to the door at the side with the gate to go through the hole in the fence at the Lexos camp. Toolboxes and duffels are in the first section and the medical lab needed for a quest is just around the corner that can have stims and other medical stuff. Continuing on, this is the bulk of the loot. These various shacks are piled high with stuff. Typically none of it is going to be super super high value loot, but there are many 10k per slot and higher items that can fill a bag very quickly. Often I find myself swapping things out for efficiency rather than struggling to fill slots like it is sometimes on other maps. In this instance we hear a fight, so we go to investigate and lo and behold a PMC with a tea bag and an efficient storage vest which is absolutely perfect for us to fill up. We go back to the middle area and look through the remaining containers and after we're done we head out via sewer. So before this run we had 2.26 million of rubles and after we had 3.19 million once all items were sold, netting us a total of over 700,000 which is crazy. As I said, I was a bit shocked as to how much money these runs make, so let's have a look at the next one. So this time we start right by the Lexos scav camp, but instead we'll mostly be looking in the building at the bottom, which I think of as the cabinet building. This has a billion filing cabinets if you're looking for the type of loot item that comes from them, and can do pretty well generally for money too. 
The main downside is it does take quite a while to look through every cabinet drawer, but once we're done in there we can go and check the medical garage again as well as the centre section if needs be. Now this time I did get super lucky because there was an unlooted medical airdrop just outside of Sparja. This does happen relatively frequently, partly because the audio is kind of buggy at the moment, which means lots of people in raid don't even know that it came in. Either way, we replaced a few different items and head to sewers again. Before this run, we had 1,330,000 total between rubles and dollars, and afterwards we had 1,999,000, including a 14k key, 30k of unsold stims, and two more max energies for a total of 669,000 rubles. Now, this next one I didn't think was very good when I was doing it, but was pleasantly surprised after we left. We start in Concordia and loot the little shop inside the corner building and the apartment with the gym inside. The loot density here isn't like it is over at Lexos, but it's okay to begin with. Interestingly, you're able to jump out of this window here, which is just around the corner from the sewer's exit. Too early for us to go of course, but one to bear in mind. Looting the black box inside the first Concordia power building nets us a bank robber rig which we will use to make 6 slots equal to 8 in our bag. Then we head through Sparja, into the back area for the technical boxes and loot crate in the back of the van as before, and head into the camp again through the hole in the fence. On this one we do the filing cabinets building, the med room and the central section, and this time we check a couple of the crates inside Lexos itself as well. Once we're full up we head back to sewers like last time. As I said, I didn't think this one was really that good, but before we had 1,975,000 total, and afterwards 2,654,000 total for a difference of 679k, although this does include 260,000 rubles of items. The RBS T key was 90k at the time, and the Archives key 70k, along with a stack of M80 worth 65,000 rubles if crafting. Either way, it shows that even runs that don't look that good can net out a very significant amount once it's all counted. The final one we have here is my lesser favoured run, but it can be good if you spawn over by the Pinewood Hotel. There's a bunch of loot spawns in the middle of the road, including a static scav and a weapons crate in the back of a truck to be had, and once you're finished with those, Pinewood is hard to miss on the other side of the road. On this run, I headed into the shop there first, including the back section for technical loot, very similar to the actual Sparja shop itself actually. Then it's always worth checking the dentist building as you can get decent med spawns in here. This is looted more often than not, but sometimes people miss stuff on the shelves, so make sure you scan around and look for that little white dot that signifies an item is nearby. Once you're kind of finished around Pinewood, we're going to want to leave via the entrance to Catacombs, and there are two stashes that we can grab on the way. The first one is right next to the Klimov Street Extract, where you have to launch the signal flare to cross as PMC. If you find the bus stop looking thing next to the hotel, just by the corner is our first stash. Along the street towards the extraction, Nikitskaya Street is another grocery shop for a quick loot. Then, as we get towards the train that goes into the tunnel, on the left there is a patch of vegetation. At the close left corner is the stash, which is actually relatively easy to see because it's another barrel one which you can pick out parts of through the bushes on your approach. From here, we cross over the back of the train crash and down into the extract. Before we had 2,635,000 rubles and afterwards we had 3,125,000, so 490k total. However, 180k of this is made up of the West 218 key, so it's just over 310 without it. As you can see, I much prefer the Lexos area, but sometimes this run can work really well if the dentist room hasn't been touched yet. So I hope that all of you go out there and make a ton of money. As usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.